Let's check in with one of our four horsemen of the technopolis. We're uh, taking Bill Gates. things that are genetically modified organisms and we're injecting them in the little kids' arms. We just shoot them right into the vein. Right into the vein. Right into the vein. Right, right into the vein. That does remind me. We got to bring back the four horsemen uh, jingle, jingle someday. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We can yeah. pull it up. Um, yes. So this is entrepreneur.com. <laughs> three books Bill Gates recommends you read. So, are you ready? For oh, the three okay. Books? We got the Bill Gates Book Club. Uh-huh. Love it. Number one, The Code Breaker by Walter Isaacson. This mm-hmm. is a. It's basically. I think it's like a, a a biography on Jennifer Doudna, who's a Nobel Prize winner for the development of CRISPR. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's a gene editing thing. Mm-hmm, gene editing thing. And his response to Code Breakers, uh, uh, he says, quote, Code Breakers is very accessible to non-scientists. And that's very important because the ethics of using CRISPR is unclear. Doudna now spends much of her time focused on moral and ethical questions, especially the potential gene editing has to exacerbate inequality. As he tells Isaacson, quote, if you think we face inequalities now, imagine what it would be like if society were genetically divided into economic levels and we transcribed our financial inequality into our genetic code. Mm-hmm. Whoa, bro. <laughs> yeah. As if class warfare weren't like bad enough. Yeah. Yeah. You make it worse you know, the by wealth, genetically. The, uh, right. The wealth separation equals a, a divide in your very humanity yeah, your, your identity yes. as a as a uh, organic human or something better than an organic human mm-hmm. yeah. uh, book number two clara and uh, and the sun written by kazu ishiguro uh, the most recent work of a nobel prize for literature uh, he tells the story of clara an artificial friend an aa i don't know why it's uh-huh. aa who arrives at the home of Josie, a young woman who has a strange disease, trying to fulfill the mission for which Clara was programmed. She will do everything in her power to accompany her owner and make her days more bearable, convinced that it is the sun with its light that can help her heal. It's kind of like a, Hmm. I guess it's got like a children's novel structure or whatever. And here's what Bill Gates said about it. While, uh, quote, while reading the book, I couldn't help but wonder which parts paint a picture of our near future and which parts are pure fiction. I believe that one day we will have utility and companion robots in our lives. Clara is primarily a companion. (laughs) Kind of weird Bill Gates saying that. (laughs) Bill Gates saying Clara... A yes. companion. No, notoriously uh, turbulent relationships with human women. <laughs> so this idea of a robot companion it's is uh, very attractive. Yes. Yes, to old Billy, someone he doesn't need to pay alimony to. It doesn't do much of what you'd expect from a utility robot, like bring you things or prepare food for you. Her purpose is almost entirely social. And while I don't know if we'll ever have emotionally sophisticated robots like her, we may see some pretty good companion robots emerge over the next decade. He's like obsessed Jeez with companion Louise. robots. Yeah, you look at that. You look at his obsession with companion robots, like in the so context weird. of his romantic life, in the context of his decades of philandering, in his decade in the <laughs> the new revelations of his, his uh, friendship with Epstein. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all all of which have only caused him more stress and consternation as uh, as these things are made public. He's like, oh, please, just give me a robot. Just love, <laughs> my goodness, I'm tired of it. The third, women. the third book recommended by Lizard Man Bill Gates, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Uh, it's about an astronaut that awakens from a long period of sleep or brought a spaceship. Um, okay, I don't want to read the whole plot there, but he uh, does just read his reaction, <laughs> which was interesting. Quote, I found parts of the story like how Ryland is, which is the main character, is chosen and how powerful the United Nations task force is that organizes mm. the mission to be unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Is that like a shade at the UN? Is that like, oh, the UN so can't what, be that powerful. That's that's unreasonable. Wait. Yeah. So what he finds unbelievable is that the character was chosen, and how powerful the United Nations task force is. 
That's unbelievable. That's hilarious. Isn't that what funny? a weird what a weird thing for him to say. <laughs> no, it's like a Okay. However, I, they didn't bother me. Science fiction has a lot of freedom to evoke things. It's hard to be uh, it's hard to be too distracted by something implausible when you're reading a story about a giant space spider. <laughs> oh, that's not the part he had trouble with. No. He's like, "Oh, the giant <laughs> space spider. No problem." But a UN that actually a powerful could, uh, UN task do something? Force? Yeah. No. <laughs> That's weird. That's kind of a burn. I wonder if the you, UN burned burn. him recently. It, it must be some weird. It's got to be some something where he's not included in the the conversations now or something. Because he's Who always knows? yeah. Maybe the, maybe they kicked him out of uh, you know the medical technocracy like the, the COVID stuff, the vaccine um, trials he was trying to get it's, going in Africa. It's almost like he's he, because he is such an institution. He's uh, he's competing yeah. with the UN. <laughs> He's he's not in the business of well, working with mean. them. He's he's yeah he's competing. Exactly. Yeah. Him him saying it's unbelievable that the United Nations would have a powerful task force is you know because he is an institution. He's not just right. a guy. That's that's kind of like Biden saying he wants re- regime change in Russia. It's <laughs> like it's you can't just have that personal thing. Like you're you're so wrapped up in the control mechanism that what you're saying has much more implications right right especially to you know with bill gates in the united nations where he's always you know working with uh multilateral international groups of uh, whatever in order to you know lower the population and stuff like that. <laughs> one of those numbers has to go to zero you mean maybe population uh, is that what you're talking about <laughs> bill gates okay so anyway there's your three books Recommended by the Bill Gates, according to entrepreneur staff. Exclusive. I'm offended he didn't. I'm offended he didn't put a, uh, you know, how to lie with statistics in there. Yeah, he's well, previously said that that's his favorite book. 